And there's never been anything probably uh, more profound that exemplifies this statement here. An ounce of prevention is worth a pound of cure. And you're going to get that by the time we're done. So in real simple terms, it's better and easier to stop something from happening in the first place than to repair the damage after it's happened. That is never so true than about the brain. They don't even have any really cures for dementia. They can't reverse it. It's one of the most difficult types of things to fall prey to, you know, as in the aging process. And too many people do. So there's a lot of good, this is really a big component of being able to hopefully stave that off for someone if they start early enough. That's what it's all about. Don't I say early enough? You don't want to. You don't need to start real early, and you'll get that as we go through here, because that's all actually on the label. All right, so let's get into it. Bottom line, this is what it is. You know, you got all your ingredients listed right there, right in front of you. All right, there's only four different ingredients, but the, the, the magic to them is the dosaging here. Okay, and you can ignore, ignore the last one. I don't. This is one here. It'll be taken and off the next label. You know, you'll, you'll you'll go to two servings. One serving from forty-five years to fifty-five, and then greater than fifty-six, including fifty-six and greater. Then you will go to two servings. You won't need to go to the the three there. You'll be fine with that now. After I've kind of rewritten out all of that, but it's brain nutrition. It's you know to maintain the youthful concentration. So that's what we're doing here. Starting at age forty-five, these things really begin to decline as the body just doesn't do a good job of extracting them from food, and we don't make them in the body very well. All right, because we're not supposed to be here. We all know that we're, we've cheated death and we now can live longer. So we're just trying to get those healthful concentrations to support a healthy brain functioning throughout a lifetime. That's what it comes down to. So the goal, supply nutrition that's limited by typical diets. You know, you have phosphatidylserine, you're really not getting that out of your diet. Uh, Folicoic acid, your body stops making that, you know, as we get older and very difficult to extract from any types of foods. And, and, and there's also a fact that, you know, you have to have a, a you have to be able to make it in the body to complement whatever else is going on in there. And then the natural aging process, you know, because we just don't do things well as we get older. And so the brain really needs extra help in getting over that hump. Rationale, real, real simple. People experience overall decline in brain function with age. I don't think that's a magic statement or anything, which can be influenced by reduced use. So don't get me wrong. It, the brain is definitely a use it or lose it. That's why people do puzzles in their old age. They keep the brain active, even though they're retired. It's very important. It is definitely a use it or lose it muscle, just like our skeletal muscle. Sedentary lifestyles, because you're not pumping blood to it. So it's not getting fresh supplies all the time. I mean, moving through the brain, just like muscles, you want to have the blood moving in and out constantly. And that's what exercise is about. So, we, so sedentary lifestyles can also be a problem. And then, of course, as we just talked talked about, the common limitations to brain nutrition, and that's what we're fixing here. I'm not worried about the other people we work with because they all exercise. All right, so here are the ingredients, these four, phosphatidylserine, acetyl-L-carnitine, alpha-lipoic acid, and B12. And they are critical in supporting the aging brain function. These are the ones that we find through science that are decreasing and causing some of the problems like homeocysteine buildup. Following the middle years now, supplementation with these naturally occurring compounds, because they are some, they're things that are already in the body. They're just not at the right levels as we get older, may balance a decline in the body's production or absorption of this brain nutrition that is essential for neurological function and brain function. So the goal is to stave off the age-related decline due to chronic lack of proper brain nutrition before problems start by continuing to maintain the brain nutrition at youthful levels throughout life. And by the way, this formula, I, I don't like to take credit for it. I mean, I did a lot of research around it, wrote the PDSRG on it, updated it a few years ago, um, was done by Dr. Bruce Ames. You can Google him and find that out in Tichnell. Um, this is, uh, you know, again, and he's you know, one of the smartest guys in the world, uh, Bruce Ames. And he, this is what he created for, uh, you know, to support brain health throughout life. And he's what, I think, Caddy's like 98 right now. And he still does lectures. The guy's really something. Yes. Um, uh, so phosphatidylserine, okay, it's just a, it's a, it is a component of all our cell membranes, not just brain, but other all of our cell membranes. And especially important, though, for the function of nerve cells and brain cells. All right, so the, here, the protective mechanisms of action of phosphatidylserine, I got pictures for this stuff, so I don't want to go crazy like, you know, protect, it protects brain nerve growth factor receptors that decrease with age. We're not going to get into all that kind of fancy stuff, but things that you do recognize, uh, dopamine, which is also sort of a calming uh, hormone that comes throughout the body. 
So it also, a good release there, but acetylcholine is actually a memory, a very important to protecting memory. So there's, it, it helps release acetylcholine in the body as well. And I got a picture again. So it prevents the loss of dendritic cells. Again, these are just important cells to the brain and then also protects against free radicals in a special area because all, almost, almost all these things also, also protect against free radicals, but they're localized in different parts of the cell. But here's the big one for all, everyone here, reduce levels of the stress hormone, commonly known as cortisol. Everybody hates that. And as we get older, those things just really pop up and increase the brain's use of sugar. In other words, glucose is the main fuel of the body. And if we can use it better, good things happen as far as thinking quick. So here's what it looks like in a brain. This is a, take the, this is a brain cell, if you will neuronal cell, same thing here. This is the membrane. And you can see phosphatidylserine is a part of that membrane. What else do you recognize there? DHA from omega-3s. So you see, these are all extremely important and proper communication coming in through into the brain cells. So again, an activation of neural signaling pathways facilitated. In other words, all these pathways are being activated because phosphatidylserine is in here. So obviously they're not activated and the cell ends up dying off if you don't have enough phosphatidylserine in there. But it binds to the membrane, right? And then at that particular point, it activates the pathways. And then it activates this protein enzyme right here, okay? Which is a major mediator of cell survival. So this is activated to protect the nerves. And this is all starting originally from phosphatidylserine and of course the omega-3 DHA as well. That's why I say you got it. It's not like taking this thing in a vacuum. You've got to make sure you have the, the baseline going and this just takes it to the next level. So bottom line is phosphatidylserine, this is its main mechanisms of action. So some pretty cool pictures here you guys can kind of look at and share. And that's the right amount. See, remember, don't forget that this phosphatidylserine works so well um, for helping protect neurons from dying, right? It got an FDA claim. The FDA doesn't hardly allow any claims for supplements, but it got a, this has a legitimate one. And this is the FDA allowed claim. Consumption of phosphatidylserine may reduce the risk of cognitive dysfunction in the elderly. And there's tons of studies to support that. So they gave it a qualified claim. That's pretty big. You don't get to see that. Right. You can say it supports brain health. Anybody can say that about anything because it obviously does. When you talk about reducing the risk, uh, that's a big FDA claim there. So that's how much uh, credibility this actually has. And those are the number, right numbers. You can find this stuff in, in other products, but you'll find out that they don't have the right amount in it. All right, acetyl carnitine. Now, this is a big one. This is just a different form of carnitine. Now, carnitine is that molecule that brings fatty acids into the mitochondria to go through beta oxidation. So that's where we get our energy from that. So this is a different form. Acetyl carnitine is a specific form that allows carnitine to get into the brain so it can penetrate. So it's actually targeted. You know, we talk about forms of nutrients have different targets in the body. So this allows carnitine to get into the mitochondria of brain cells. And it's central to energy production in brain cells and a powerful antioxidant in stressed brain tissues. And of course, again, just like the phosphatidylserine, levels naturally decline in aging, leading to compromised brain activity. Obviously, if it's a brain nutrient, we're going to compromise activity. And lots of studies around it demonstrate a wide variety of benefits to brain and nerve function based on its qualities of protecting protecting neuron, you know, your neurons and all the, all throughout the brain and functions as, and this is a big one here, and functions related to what we call neuroplasticity. And for those of you here, I put a definition, the ability of the brain to adapt to changes in the individual environment by forming new neural connections over time. And that explains the brain's ability to adapt. It's a mass to master new skills, store memory information, and recover from brain injury. So this is given to people with concussions all the time as well. And here's what it looks like in the brain. This is the metabolism of acetyl-carnitine. You can see it coming into the cell here. Right, and you get in here and there's your uh, tricarboxylic acid or the Krebs cycle, if you will, citric acid cycle, it's the same thing, right? It gets in here, breaks off. And as you can see, it goes in through here and you can produce again, which is a big one, you can produce acetylcholine. Remember we saw that on the previous slide, what does that do? It helps protect memory. It allows the memory to function properly. So a big energy producing nutrient to keep the brain firing all the way around, acetylcarnitine to make sure all this stuff happens inside the mitochondria. And there it is. And it's because it is acetylocarnitine and not carnitine, it does penetrate the mitochondria of brain cells. 
And this just kind of writes that all out there for you. Everything I just kind of described is all written there for those of you that are interested. But the bottom line is this is what we're looking for. Keeping the acetylcholine flowing in through here, right? It's a precursor of it, the key component of memory. So that's your highlight thing you want to remember that, that this is what acetylcarnitine is letting take place at a, at a youthful level. That's the point because we're putting in right here, a lot of it in here to get it back up to those normal levels. So if we went into an aging brain that had been using this before any problems occurred, you'd find almost identical to youthful levels of acetylcholine production. All right, alpha lipoic acid, another one, you know, sort of like your uh, phosphatidylserine and not unlike, you know, uh, other antioxidants, but the bottom line is it actually can work in what, which is very unusual, both lipid and water soluble. That's extremely unusual for anything. Therefore, it plays a central role in producing energy and as an antioxidant in, like I said, localized area. So if they're all antioxidants, why do I need them? Well, because that molecule works in different areas and it also works to regenerate other antioxidants. So you'll, we'll, we'll take a look at that as well. But the bottom line is the supplementation, uh, alpha lipoic acid is shown. And by the way, it's given for all types of clinical reasons too, at high, very high doses. But here it's shown to protect against age associated loss of neurotransmitters, you know, the things that are going back and forth through the synopsis of your brain, which is just, you know, obviously we just lose them as we get older. But this, protects against the loss of those and their receptors. And of course, those are the things that underline uh, bad brain function when they start to disappear. But our ability to produce and acquire, so in other words, we can get a little bit from diet, but not much. And we do produce it in cells, but it begins to significantly go down, just like your muscles shrink and everything else. Alpha lipoic acid now is significantly going down after about age 40, 45. And so it wanes in the aging and, and, and then in aging and compromises the energy production and the ability to, re, to scavenge these radicals we talked about, because it also it, it allows the, re, the glutathione, vitamin C and vitamin E to keep working as antioxidants. So alpha lipoic acid can regenerate those antioxidants in the brain as well. That's why I said it's important you take your multi because these things don't work in a vacuum when you're talking about the brain. So it affects all parts of the body and brain. And that's the number to help restore to youthful levels. You notice I keep saying that, that's what it's all about. And there's a pretty good picture, this is really a, a good picture. This is the, no this is the normal degenerative degeneration of brain in aging right here. This is how it works. It goes in here, neurotransmitters, you've got uh, stressors coming in, you've done, you, you produce extra free radicals, you get damage to DNA. And if you get damage to DNA, the brain cells just don't make, each, make things right anymore. You, you have a decrease in cell energy, increase in free radicals, decrease in antioxidants, free radical damage, inflammatory proteins, and you've got the neurodegeneration taking place. Well, look where alpha lipoic acid plays in, in every one of these. It interferes with this cycle of inflammation that destroys brain cells. So it's, it, and of course there it is, the brain cells which make what? Acetylcholine, which is that key component of memory again. So you can see it, it blocks these things from taking place and we can sort of regenerate, keep it regenerating properly rather than uh, degeneration. And there's the actions of alpha lipoic acid in protecting brain cells. Last but not least, and this is probably the one you hear about the most is B12. B12 deficiencies is, is closely associated with, uh, you know, cognitive decline, early cognitive decline. That and folic acid, another B vitamin, of course. So yes, we have a lot of it in in our multivitamin, and probably enough, I would I would argue, uh, if you're taking them your whole life to not actually have to put one on this. But what if someone starts taking this and they weren't taking a multi? Now at least they've got the B12 all up there where it needs to be. So that's why it was the importance of putting it in here. We can't trust the fact that everybody's going to take a multi when they see something like this. Okay, so it provides essential support for the maintenance of neural tissues. Uh, and of course, and of course, neural tissue, you have nerve tissues everywhere, you know, in the body, obviously, but we're talking especially in the, in the brain. As many as one out of seven people greater than 65 develop B12 deficiency. Now, deficiency means really bad things are going to happen, but everybody is pretty much insufficient unless they're taking a supplement. And of course, that's due to a declining capacity to absorb it from food. We have an intrinsic factor to get B12 from food. It's very difficult after about age 40. Very, very difficult. So you're not going to get it from food. Now, insufficiencies can cause irreversible or deficiencies, irreversible damage. In other words, once the damage is done, that's why I say protection before cure. Once it's done, 
Take all the B12 you want and folic acid, add it all in there, even though you were deficient, it's pretty much irreversible when it's happened in the brain. Other things uh, in the body, it's not, but in the brain, it is. You end up with anemia, brain atrophy, the shrinking of the, of the actual muscle of the brain, cognitive deterioration. It takes one to four months to correct a deficiency, but you could you could end up still with the irreversible. Irre, we'll have enough in there, but it's irreversible damage once that's happened. I can't tell you that's happened to so many of the elderly because that's before we knew that we really weren't getting it from our food the way we needed to. And here's what it looks like. So this is where you end up with. This is kind of a nice little, uh, this just shows you how insufficient, we're not even talking, we're just talking about insufficient B12, which everybody has as they age. This is the de deleterious cycle that takes place, deficiency here. And then what, what is taking place of all these things? All the way down here, neurodegeneration, and you end up with cerebral dysfunction, brain atrophy, and dementia. That's just pretty much everything that you see up here. But this just takes you through the whole thing. But this, this does a really good job of showing you how it happens. So let's just start right here. Remember, we talked about how do you know your, we talked about silent hunger. This really characterizes it. So you're low on B12, you know, starting when you're in your 20s or 30s. And if you weren't using a multivitamin, you're probably low on B12 anyway, regardless at any age. Well, especially when you get older, because you're not getting it, even that little tiny bit you might get from your diet, you can't even extract from the diet. So you end up with that. We talk about the silent hunger. Your body the whole time has been saying, I need more B12, B12. It's not like the hunger for you feeling your stomach for food. That's easy. You can hear that one all day long. But when it comes to when it comes to your vitamins, your folic acid, okay, alpha lipoic acid, phosphatidylserine, and the things we're talking about right now, it is an undetectable starting point. It's not quite, you don't know when that started. Okay. So, but we know where it starts when we see it, you know, the studies of, of tissues of the brain. So it's starting here. So you've got a you've got an invisible deficiency. You don't know yet. Now you've got a deficient supply. So everything's okay. You know, you're getting through life, but then you start emptying all your body's spores. So you start getting those mild symptoms. And you even know people like this, they're tired all the time, exhaustion, susceptible to infections, and mood swings. That's the first sign of deficiency now. What's the second sign? Now you're depleted, the body stores are depleted. Now you've got the severe. Now you're up here. You're probably at an irreversible damage. Depression, dementia, numb limbs, tingling, anemia, nerve pain. This is very common in our society today. And like you say, you end up with one out of seven people. That's a pretty big number. That's bigger than most diseases all the way around. So the bottom line is, this is what you got right here. That's, what, that's the, kind of the whole sequence of what takes place there with that. So, of course, we put it in there at the right number. That should balance with other B vitamins. Of course, that's coming from your multi. That's why you got to be careful because you can take all the B12 you want, you know, but it should also balance with other B vitamins because folic acid, if you have enough of it, can, balance, can mask. The fact that when they test you, they'll say, you're not B12 deficient. But if you take if you have folic acid at a different level, it can mask the fact that you are. So you should always include a multivitamin mineral for complete brain nutrition. Okay, so let's summarize this thing. Then we'll open stuff up. All right, unique key points. I think you got them all. 45 years and up, right, to supply brain nutrition, limited by aging and diet to levels consistent with youthful concentrations to continue to support your brain structure and function into advancing years. Following the middle years, so the 45 there, what we, well, that's what we recommend at that point. And you can start earlier, I get that's a common question. I probably should have put that in here as a common question. If you've got a history of dementia in your family, yeah, you can start it in, in your 30s. There's no problem at all, doesn't matter. But following middle year, supplementation with phosphatidylserine, acetylcarnitine, all the ones we looked at, can balance that decline in the body's production and absorption of these substances that are essential to normal brain and neurological function, as we just saw in the diagrams. And here are the doses. Now, this is the these are the same ones that are on the bottle right here, but I took off the last one. And you can, I like splitting it. You can take eight all at once, but I like splitting it. I take mine in the morning, I take the other one in the evening. It's just kind of like my own delivery system. And for you, those of you that know, um, yeah, you won't find anything like out this because this, this, there's a note here I wanted you to get. This is the very best solution in a crowded, misleading space. When I see commercials, Rao, and I see the, like this predigen or whatever it is from the jellyfish, the claims they make are outlandish. They should be just taken off the TV. They're illegal. They talk about, you know, then they have all these people talking. Oh, now I clear, I think. 
you know, you can't, there's so many of these things, it's very difficult to reverse. This, in a, and that's a very misleading space. I always want to kick the TV in when I look at these infomercials on brain nutrients, because everybody's looking for that solution. God, I, you know, I can't remember where I put my car keys, you know, and, you know, they're, they're, they're all these different things that they use are just really, they're outlandish claims, because it's not that way. You've got to stop it before it starts. That's what it comes comes down to. And that's, this is what we're talking about. We're not talking about taking, you know, jellyfish nutrients or some of these other weird ones that are out there. They really, they really aren't, uh, you know, there's really no great science behind it like you just witnessed with all this. And now again, this was never meant to be a gym product. That's why I put down, we originally made it just for our families and the celebrities we work with because they didn't care about what they paid for it. But it's very hard to, and you're in the gym and the average person's about 40 years old or 35 years old or a much now it's even less, as you guys know, it's much less than that. They're not thinking about age-related cognitive decline. So it was never a big gym product, but we do a lot online with it. And it's a very popular, I think you guys know, I take care of almost, you pretty much name any top CEO. Uh, I take care of all their programs. And of course, this is a big part of it because where they are. And by the way, if you remember how gooey the other ones were for all the years, we could never get a manufacturer to make them. It's just a specialized formula. It was very difficult to mix these things, but we finally did. We got one now. They're in tablets. So the next one, we have six weeks of inventory of the regular capsules left that still get gooey at the end. Um, but people will still take it. I go, God, I mean, if you didn't know anything about supplements and you didn't know this is the greatest formula in the whole world for your brain, you would never take it. But it smells terrible. It was uh, gooey, but I knew what it was doing for me. So then, and so I would tell everybody, hey, you want it? You don't want it? Don't worry about it. But that's all we got. We changed manufacturers 10 times. We can never get it to not be gooey by the time you got to the bottom. But we finally get, got a new manufacturer, Calpesh, right here in California, makes this for us. Really uh, amazing tablets now. So we're all good with that. Now, now you can feel good to give it no matter who you give it to. All right. So here's your little takeaway for your train. If you guys are going to promote this you know, uh, maybe in a couple of weeks or whatever. Here it is. Think stronger and better longer. B bottom line, that's the way I always look at it. Supplies brain nutrition limited by age. It's just the stuff we just looked at and diet le to levels consistent with youthful concentrations to support brain structure function throughout a lifetime, including offering protection from age-related cognitive decline. And there's that, it's better, to, easier to stop something. That's big there. Keeps proper brain amounts. And I just keep transferred over here that is shorted by natural aging and diet to help keep the brain cells nourished. You just want to bathe in all the nourishment, right? Healthy, functioning, and strong. And it complements the multivitamin by adding these specific brain nutrients that are obviously only B12 would be in the vitamin. And the I so I just actually called them out here for you. But those are all on the labels. You don't need to really, you know, you don't have to memorize that stuff. It's always right there to, to, to balance the natural decline in production absorption. There you have it. All of it there. Best science solution in a crowded, misleading space. I wanted to make sure you add that. So this is a good, just one pager for everything. And here's what it looks like. Now, I wanted to end with this because people always ask me, okay, if I'm doing, okay, let's say I'm working with a, or Kat and I are with a celebrity and people that have no financial limitations, you know, uh, that's a whole different thing. And I'll show you the final product on that. But if I'm doing a complete health longevity program, for a, a CEO, for, you know, a, an, an athlete, celebrity, no matter who we're, we, we have to work with, you know, we print everything out like this. So there's your baseline right there. So, and if I was going to work with someone's budget, I want to show you what it looks like, but you'll see the final product on this thing is what, when there's no financial limitations. So everyone, no matter who it is, this is your health longevity program based on budget, the very minimum to support, support to complement any diet based on budget to support activity and longevity. The minimum is your multi, you guys already know, baseline, fast-acting protein, uh, protein, and omega-3 and calcium as needed. So there's your baseline. You go there. I don't go with brain health at this point, right? Because this is more important. Brain health is not going to work well if you don't have that baseline going. That's the foundation. What, what's the next thing I would add based on a budget? for? This is the average person. I'm not talking about necessarily someone that you know, was worried about cognitive decline later on. But we're talking about what's the first thing I would add based on budget for complete health would be the superior antioxidant because of not just eye and brain health as well, but also daily recovery. And alpha-lipoic acid and CoQ10 are in that as well. Then you get your lycopene, lutein, and zeaxanthin, which protects your skin significantly. So that's the next thing I would add. Next add, the ultra probiotic. And again, we know that's the second brain of the body, and it's telling you what's going on in the environment, communicating that through you, to your heart. Hey, you got problems coming to your brain, got problems coming, and even body fat, it communicates things there. 
So the ultra probiotic is the next thing I would add based on budget. And then joint flex. Oh, again, this is uh, joint skin. I should have got to change that name there. But it, yeah, so the joint skin collagen would be the next thing I would add. And that would be, and that is the new name of it, of course. And that again, now, I would reverse that if someone was really in for joint, like I've got an athlete I'm working with or something, and they've got an injury, they'll obviously, this would be the first add on top of minimum. So you can flip that around based on what their goal is. But this, I'm just building this out for you the way I would recommend it to the average person. And if you've got no financial limitations, you end up with your complete health and longevity. And there's your brain health and extra vitamin D up here to hit those levels of 40 to 50 nanograms per milliliter. And that's exactly what I do for name it, name it, name the CEOs you see on TV every day. That's exactly what they take to a T. And all those links are live. So their agents and attorneys can click on and see a little video and get the description of the product. So that's how we have to have write stuff out. Now we don't have to write the stuff on the left, on the right. I mean, the minimum first ad, we just have the stuff on the left, obviously. And there you have it. So look, here's, yeah, you guys know my, my, this is my swan song. You know, and you, you know, Eris and uh, Brian, you've now been there and you've seen me, you know, talk about this. This is, this is the way I, this is why, the way I want to see it. You know, at the end of the day where people work with our staff now and knowing that they don't want to work with their staff later, because we are the protection before drugs approach. So we end up with what? This is my dream that every house has a health cabinet instead of a medicine cabinet to help avoid the medicine cabinet. You're always going to have a medicine cabinet, right? You get colds and you get stuff like that. But we're talking about the prescription medications that everybody's everybody's on. Bottom line is a nice health cabinet with your basics right there versus the typical. This is a typical cabinet in an adult's house right here with prescription drugs from hell. One drug to treat another drug, another drug, another drug. That's just a drug having so many of those things could have definitely been you know, taken away. So prevention on the left side before drugs. Our goal there is to not have to use all these things. And then you can add to it. So we've got our basic baseline you're looking at on the left there, but what? We got probiotics. We have we have the probiotics and we have the superior antioxidant that and you know antibiotics the most overprescribed thing in the world. You know, so by using those things, we can avoid so much of the pain of having to use antibiotics when we don't need them half the time. And then ineffective dementia meds, which there are. We got brain health to help us from not having to get there, hopefully for most people. So again, health cabinet versus the medicine cabinet. I just had to end with that. There you go.